Hi everyone, in this video I'll be folding slugs, terrestrial slugs to be specific. This is my 29th original design created from a few months ago. And again for anyone who's interested in folding this, the crease pattern for this slug is available for free at my Kofi shop. The link is in the description below. There's a few things different about this design, so I'll give some more brief context before starting my folding time lapse. If you've downloaded my slug, you'll find a blueprint like this. Previously in my Monase's Crab Spider video, we quickly covered fold and crease types on a crease pattern, and a few basic steps on how to interpret it to start folding. I'll also link the video here and in the description below. Firstly, we start with the grid size, and this time it's a 16 by 16 square grid. This is easier to prepare and only involves dividing the square into halves until you have 16 divisions to use as our coordinates. Next, you might have noticed these polygons present within the pattern. These larger ones are called Pythagorean stretches. As we previously know from the Monaeus' crab spider, our appendages, or flaps, are square-shaped, and they are mostly stacked neatly next to or on top of each other. But what if we needed to fit these flaps onto a smaller grid size? In short, Pythagorean stretches are a technique that allows us to place square-shaped flaps more densely together by overlapping and connecting them to improve model and paper usage efficiency. The more that you can fit into a smaller space, the better but at the cost of increased complexity. This is an example of one of them, where we want to place two large flaps that don't quite fit smoothly alone on a sheet of paper with smaller divisions. Pythagorean stretches can come in many forms to accommodate for the needs of a model. There's a lot more to them, but I'll leave it for another time. Finally, these smaller ones are called gusset stretches, and they act in a similar way. With that, there are some small changes to how we interpret our creases, and there's a little more work involved too. This time, our axial creases run along the grid that we've just folded, and also through the stretches that we've just seen. In combination with this, our ridge creases this time also define the boundaries of these stretches, which determines the change in direction for the axial creases from the grid. And again, you don't need to worry too much about the hinge creases, there's not many of them. Once folded, you should end up with a base that looks like this. And with that, let's begin folding. I folded my first slug using a 14cm square sheet of 24 GSM Thai mulberry tissue paper. It's cheap, very thin, and more easily accessible online. The downside is that it lacks durability, and it doesn't hold creases too well unless pre-treated with a strengthening agent, like carboxymethyl cellulose or hairspray. But it's enough for this model. Like last time, I started with folding the grids before using it as coordinates to fold the axial and ridge creases. After that, it's collapsing all those folds to form the base that we just saw and I generally start from the outer edges of the paper and work my way inwards. It took me around 40 minutes to fold the base. It was difficult to see the creases, so I took my time. Next, I thought I'd challenge myself with a smaller 6.5cm square sheet of the same paper. The same process follows.
and another challenge. Folding one with a smaller 5.5cm square sheet of 50GSM craft paper. Next, the final step is shaping. I used a 10% weight to volume carboxymethyl cellulose solution, but you can also use PVA glue or hairspray which can be more difficult to handle. This is brushed in between the layers of folded paper before sculpting it into the shape that you want. Here's the first one done. Depending on the subject, it is generally easier to start shaping from the main body before working your way out towards the appendages. In the case of this slug, I used a highlighter marker as a mould to shape the main body first before working towards the head. It's probably a banana slug based on the colour. I'll let Manaises look after them. Like with any art, it's important to use references relating to your subject. This will help you capture more realism in your final model. To help make it look more natural, it's also a good idea to make your model look less geometric by rounding out the corners with additional folds where possible. Sometimes it's a good idea to make some edges more pronounced or raised to define anatomical separations for more realism, like the mantle of this slug. And with that, the origami terrestrial slugs are complete. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.